It was not easy getting here, I'll tell you that much, but we we got through it. So I hope everyone is doing okay during this whole pandemic and sort of the extended lockdown kind of thing. So, um, so tonight we are in part three of painting the Irish lass. And we are still going to be in the light mixture with this particular painting. And what I mean with by the light mixture is that we are still using this guy right here, which is the light mixture. I have three. I have the light, dark, and medium mixtures. So the light mixture, you'll see if you've been with us a while, I'm in the light mixture for about 60% of the time. Remember my whole thing, too light, too early, I'm too dark, too early, too bad, too sad. So light mixture, 60% of the time, about another 35% of the time would be the medium mixture. And then the dark mixture, that will be like around maybe about 3%. And then the white pastel for the highlights and basically bringing things up, you know. So that will be the case. So right now, the word of the day is patience. We have to have patience. Patience in art, patience in life, patience in everything. We have to bide our time. And we have to make sure that we take care of things first and then go into the exciting stuff so just like just like a lot of things in life this technique is the same so let's see who we have here we have roy and patty and mike good to see you colette and we have brad and mr steve Leahy. good to see you and willie good to see you how's it going let's see who else we got here uh, Nikos was here. Uh, he had to go, but it was good to see him here. And, and let's see. So, we had a great interview with uh, Mr. Ken Lynn next week. Next week, at this time, it's going to be very exciting. So, next week, at this time, we are going to be uh, with Mr. Steve Leahy, we're going to have an interview with Steve. Steve has many years, he's been the torchbearer of the airbrush. So this is gonna be very exciting. We're going to hear about his, hear about his experiences, the changes that he had seen in the airbrush world, how it has affected his art, all these different things that I think are going, that I know are gonna be very valuable to me and valuable to you. So every two weeks, I'm going to have, most likely, an interview with some of the giants of Airbrush. And I think that's going to be very exciting. So, so next week, we are going to have Mr. Steve Leahy, and I'm very excited for that. And so let's see if we could make that happen with Mr. Steve Leahy next week. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Bill, Mr. Bill Snagan, how you feeling? Good to see you. So glad you're here. That is great. Okay, so let's go back to my control panel. So, okay. So I have my Extreme Patriot Arrow, but today I'm showing... Hey, Rick, how you doing? I'm showing, I'm showing this which is the Extreme Patriot Arrow, same thing, but it's the Extreme Patriot 105. Same exact airbrush, uh, my same customizations, but with a larger cup. If you're painting backgrounds, you're working larger, you might want that larger cup. So I do have uh, two of these available. One of them is sold and one is available and you can go to paintingglyphs.com and you can snag that one for the same price of $149.95. So we'll be looking at that today. Okay, now let's see. Okay, so we're gonna put some light on the subject and I am going to go ahead 
and we're going to start basically turning the forms and that's what's so important is to make sure that those forms turn and Bill says uh, he's quarantined from COVID and his wife's in the hospital how is Sue doing uh, Bill is she doing better And very slowly we're going to build this up. And distance is everything. You ever feel like you're going too dark, too fast? And I think when that happens, what's occurring is that uh, when you're going too dark, too fast, oh, that's too light, too fast. Look at that one. Oh, boy. Uh, there we go. And we sort of are losing control. Uh, increase your distance you'll be surprised how much that really does help so let's go ahead increase our distance and remember when you're further away you get more beautiful gradations and we're just going to continue now, one of the things that was brought to my attention about paper, uh, pencil lines, a lot of uh, times uh, people will say that the pencil lines bother them, and I can understand that, you know, especially, you know, we all have aspirations to be uh, photorealists and stuff like that, right, of course, but uh, what happens is... Um, we tend to want everything to be so refined in the early going, and just like, you know, cooking, you don't want it to be perfect in the early going. You can't. That's why it, it is the early going. So you, you have to let things grow, right? You, we can't, if we put more water on a seed, we're actually going to end up drowning that seed. Same thing. If we're looking to make everything really beautiful in the beginning, what's going to happen is that we're going to end up ruining the final project to make it look beautiful now. Let it, you know, always try and make it as beautiful as possible in each stage, but let it be in that stage. That's so important to let it be in that stage. And with the light mixture, I can go and get any variation of, of values I want. say you did get too dark in an, in an area during this early stage don't worry so much about erasing it because things will catch up but you have to make mental notes that you might have gone too dark of course there are exceptions when you are going to erase in the early stages but you definitely don't want to uh, become erase happy because two things are going to happen you're going to start destroying the paper and then you have a new problem to deal with with the rest of the paper, with the rest of the painting. Uh, the second thing that's going to happen, like I said, you're going to get into that trap of trying to make it look beautiful in every stage or make it look perfect. Like I said, you want to do your best job, but know that it's not going to be perfect in this stage. You're just developing. There we go. Hey John, good to see you. How are you, sir? And here's what's interesting. When you look at the eyebrows, you'll notice that what happens is, is, is let me zoom in and focus this, is that you'll see that the eyebrows go from the center 
in, right, the direction of the hairs. They go this way. However, from in this direction, they go out in. So they sort of meet up right here where it makes that turn. You know, it goes up and makes that turn. When it makes that turn is usually when the hairs change the direction with the eyebrow, which is very interesting to say the least. Hey, how you doing, the nameless subscriber? And Chris, how's it going? Good to see you guys. Sam, how's it going? I'm so glad you made it, Sam. And I'm not getting too involved with details. However, I am getting involved with angles. You always want to worry about the angles, right guys? Always, always. And so I see the angles coming a bit sharper over there. So I'm going to go ahead and touch on that. Now there are, in the early going, there are times when you want to get rid of some of those pencil lines. That's okay. You know, sometimes it does warrant it. Now you can look to do it with an eraser, but it's not always going to work. But in this case, I think we did. Not bad. Okay, so we got rid of that pencil line. That makes me feel good. Patrick, how's it going? All the way from Montreal. And Brad, also from Canada. Good to see you, sir. As I wanted to get lighter, I'm going to increase my distance slowly. See that? Going to increase my distance. Same thing here. I wanted to be light on the top part of the white of the eye on the right. So I'm going to have a really nice distance. And then it's dark right here. So I'm going to decrease my distance drastically. Okay. And so now we're here, we can go ahead and develop some of the light and darks here. Right here, by the bridge of the nose, it gets darkest. So we're going to go ahead and touch on that. But notice there is a dark spot, but I want you also to notice that it's a very soft edge into this mid-tone. by this nostril here. And remember, when you want a darker line, you're going to get pretty close to the paper with the airbrush. See that? Just like that. It's all about, it's all about distance. Paint in three dimensions. One second rule. Keep it light. You have that mantra, <laughs> for lack of a better term, you're going to be okay. You just stick with those principles. And the great thing about principles, they work for a wide variety, a wide range of situations. And there are always exceptions to every rule, but they don't always come up, so that's okay, you know, so don't worry about it. So Steve, uh, Willie says, Tim, did you get a ton of snow? We did. Oh, I think it was uh, a week ago Sunday, a week ago Monday, we actually got two feet of snow here in Jersey. And then I think on Monday, we probably got, I would say, maybe... Maybe about six inches of snow. And there's more snow coming, Willie. So we've been getting hit hard, you know. 
And so, hey Darren, good to see you. How are you? What's new? So Darren is here all the way from Leeds, England. So that's fantastic. And thank you so much, Darren, for that wonderful encouragement. Hey, David Lee Trevino, how's it going? Good to see you guys. Thank you for spending your Wednesday evening with me. Oh, Willie got eight inches. That's enough though, right? That's enough to, to uh, change your day for, for a bit, huh? Did you have to shovel, Willie? So as you can see, we're gonna zoom out and we're just gonna take a look on how this Irish lass is doing here. And so what we wanna do, I think that I might be too light. So I'm just gonna darken like that. It's probably more indicative to what I have here. And so I wanna continue developing the three dimensional qualities here. Hey Rick, how's it going? Good to see you. One inch overnight. Oh, wow. Melted by rain. That, that wasn't too bad. And uh, and uh, Sam said he got snowed in. One centimeter stops us. <laughs> That's funny. Got some Sprite. I know it's not good for me. But uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, drink some Sprite just to quench our thirst. So I got rid of my glasses for a moment because I want to start working on some of the large areas and some of the large areas I don't wear my glasses because I want to see the big shapes and if you wear glasses and you take them off it's almost like squinting your eyes right and so you start seeing large shapes and not the little you're seeing the forest and not the trees so to speak you know so that's important Oh, wow, Mike has some frost on the cars. <laughs> so definitely variations of winter, right? You know, degrees of winter happening among us. Right here I can see, I'm always looking, and I'm always trying to make sure that I am not, I'm making sure that I am not being happy with the way everything is without really having a critical analysis of my shapes and my values and everything else uh, so let me see if I lighten this up I can definitely see I went a little crazy with this dark here so I'm just gonna just with this uh, very non-aggressive eraser I'm just gonna pull up some of the dark of the, the cast shadow of that nostril there and the nameless uh, subscriber says, what's that artwork in the background over my shoulder? Oh yeah, behind me, that is a pastel painting. So I think you guys are probably realizing that my background has changed this week. <laughs> and uh, so let's see. So as you can see, that's a pastel painting I'm working on right over here. That's a pastel painting I'm working on. So we're in my regular studio now. I kind of gotten out of the bedroom for my YouTube studio. I moved it into my pastel studio. So now my in my studio, one side's airbrush, one side's pastel. So you can see my pastels back here. I have quite a large connect collection. Considering I was painting in pastels for about uh, years. I was quite a few years. <laughs> I don't want to date myself. But yes, been around uh, doing airbrush for uh, a long time, but for an extremely long time, I have been doing pastels. Up here, you can see an airbrush painting I did in color. Uh, that won a major award in, uh, on Fifth Avenue in New York City at a gallery. That was a group show. So that's my little, my little uh, tour, so to speak, and Brad says it's cold. <laughs> yeah. Now that's Celsius, guys. So 48 to 40 minus 48 Fahrenheit would be like on the moon or something, but uh, minus 48 Celsius is still bad. Uh, so 
Uh, I tried pastel, uh, the nameless subscriber said, and it's troublesome for me. Uh, I have on my blog, I actually have a book on there that's totally free and goes over how I do a very controlled, different kind of uh, pastel method. It's called the pastel palette method. Uh, definitely check it out. It's really wild. So you go to paintedglyphs.com and you hit on the blog. And in the blog, you just look for the pastel palette method. And it's about 38 uh, entries and goes over the whole technique. So I highly recommend that, you know. So Patrick says it's cold. Wow. So you guys are definitely cold up there. Feels like Steve's uh, show and tell. <laughs> Yeah, we always got something to uh, share with you guys, right? And as I'm moving around, I'm always moving around, right? I'm always uh, looking about and trying to develop different areas. So right now I'm going to just work on this element of her shirt there and and keep keep it moving you know don't stay in one area don't get pimping going john augusta dominique i'm gonna say paint the ensemble not the parts paint it as a whole and have the whole painting come together as it comes together when it's finished it's going to look like it was done in one sitting in one breath and i really believe that and that's why when you see me paint and I teach, it's always, I don't want to see a perfect eye and a second perfect eye. No, don't want to do that. That's the way those billboard painters uh, paint on the highway. You know, we are artists. We want to have breath in our work when it comes to the portrait. So that's why we want to... We, when we look at a person, we're not looking at one eye, two eyes from far away. We're looking at the whole. That's how we recognize them. Okay, so now I'm always looking at where I'm neglecting. And so moving around, I can see I can start putting in some volume and some three-dimensional qualities of the hair. But I'm only working on the forest. I'm not working on the trees, right? So let's move this down. Always keep your air down and pump that trigger. Okay, keep your air down and pump that trigger. I want you to paint the forest and not the trees. We'll get to the trees later and we'll get to the leaves and we'll get to the bugs on the leaves. But you can't do that until you paint the forest. The hair, like anything else, is a three-dimensional form. That's being affected by the light the same way that her nose, her lips, her eyes are all being affected by that same light source. And let's see. Okay, so yeah, really cold out there, that's for sure. All right, so we're still we're still turning things, right? And let's see if I can darken this image just a little bit so we can maybe see some of those values I'm speaking of. Okay, so right here and right here. I remember uh, looking at one of Steve Driscoll's videos, his live streams. Yes, that is one for the book, <laughs> Whitley, that's for sure. Um, thank you for that. And so when things are affected by the light, right? So, so we're looking at this form, right? And you can always tell by the cast shadow where the actual light is coming from. It's going to be opposite of the cast shadow. So if we look at the nose, the cast shadow is going down and to the left. So that means the light is up and to the right, correct? 
So what we're always going to do is we're always going to look and find, try and find how the light is that up, the light that's coming from the upper right, how it's affecting all the forms and how those forms, as they turn away from the light, as they move to the lower left, how that is being affected, how, how is that form being affected by the light and also by the shadow as it turns away. So we're going to go ahead and lightly work on this. And when we are actually looking at the forms of the light, we can definitely see where we might have had some errors because it just isn't cohesive with the shadows going to the lower left and the lights going from the upper right. So it kind of keeps us, keeps us honest. There we go. So you see, also, one of the things you want to notice, the more round an object, the slower the turning from the light to the dark, meaning that the gradation is going to be longer if it's more round. If it's sharper, the gradations are going to be quicker. So it's going to go from light to dark real fast. So let's see where we can actually see that in action. So if we look here, you see on the forehead, it goes very slow from light to dark, right? You have right here, you can see you have some shadow here, and then very slowly it moves into the light. That's because it's well-rounded. And being well-rounded also means that it it takes more time to go from the light to the dark. Now, in her nose, especially here, the nose kind of turns and then all of a sudden it cuts in. So it's much more drastic. So being more drastic, we're gonna have a much quicker progression from the light to the dark. You see this? Much faster, a much faster progression. That's because the turn is definitely more dramatic. And with that dramatic turn, you have to you have to intellectualize that and say, okay, like a sculptor, since that's turning quick, it's going to have certain characteristics and properties. The light's going to react. Uh, the light is going to have a reaction to the form. And the form's going to have a reaction to the light. And so you see, once we see that and then put that more drastic uh, reaction there, it just makes much more sense. And it's almost like trying to find a place, trying to find a cabin in the woods with a map is a lot easier than just trying to find it, uh, you know, by guessing. Not that I've ever been in the woods or the cabin, I'm a city boy. But that's the only metaphor or analogy I can think of. <laughs> so you see that we have that nice sharp progression. Here too, right? You have this, this dark that comes here, right? But it's turning a lot slower. And you can see it's a lot more gradated because it's more round than that nose. So you see that? Makes a lot of sense. Let's see if we have any questions. Uh, Air Todd, hey Air Todd, how's it going? He says that the light is blinding. Well, I do apologize for that, my friend. We'll see what we can do about that. Uh, maybe move the camera a little bit. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Let's see. If it makes for a better viewing experience, I don't mind helping you guys out. So let's see. So well, good to see you there, Todd. Now we're still in the light mixture. No, no rush to go and get darker.
not yet. I mean, we are making things darker, but with the light mixture, it forces us not to go too dark. And let's see, so, so uh, the name of the subscriber says, do you have any videos on color airbrush work? Hoping some techniques can translate to your acrylic airbrushing. I do have some early ones. Uh, 2018, I have several color ones, uh, which are really good. Uh, and very similar to my technique here. I actually do an India ink underpainting in the video. So definitely check that out. I would say January of 2018, I have a series of painting the portrait in color. And I think that, I think you'll enjoy that, definitely. Okay, so we're always looking to see if we are actually on the ball, you know, and that's something I'm always working on, always, always. So one of the things that I am going to check is the under eyelid here. So I'm suspecting that I might have drawn this just a little bit incorrect. So remember, you wanna have that strong critical analysis of your work during the painting. So this way, if there's any changes to make, you can make them because you find a mistake. There we go. Okay, again, we're always trying to turn the forms and everything like that. And let's see, Mike says he's tried and like placing his light in about the same place as the light source on the image. It helps him visualize on the paper. Very cool. Uh, for me, I basically have uh, lights on all sides. It's a little bit different, Mike, when working with video. We have to overkill with the lights, you know. That's the thing. With video, you have to have a lot more lights than, than uh, one could imagine. Speaking of that, one of my lights did die, so I am ordering another studio light. So it might be a little bit darker than usual in here. Hey, what's up there, Bill? Good to see you. So as you see, I'm doing some nice turning of the forms on this side. This side is a little washed out from the photograph, but that doesn't mean we can't go ahead and look for, go ahead and actually look for the turning of the forms, okay? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look for the turning of the forms. And let's go ahead and make that happen. Okay, again, the critical analysis that you have to have of your work. So I see as the ear comes down here, I actually am extending this dark here a little bit too much. So I'm going to go ahead and correct that. Okay, just as I correct the student's work, I correct my work as I go. And that's basically what happens. You become your own teacher eventually when you are ready to uh, leave the nest of your of your teacher and then you can go ahead and you can be the one making the corrections of your own work and let's see here a little bit more shallow here and you don't gotta, you don't have to go too crazy with the airbrushing. Things are gonna catch up, you know. So don't worry about that. And let's 
continue turning some of these forms here. And we'll look over here. And definitely this side of her nose, this side plane over on the right. Now, it is a side plane, but since it's on the, the light facing side, it's going to be significantly lighter than the side plane on the left side. doing against the India ink very well remember I'm using a light mixture which is very very uh, how do you say very very diluted and this paper is really good for this and it erases very well very very well I mean uh, there are limitations it's not pencil but it does erase surprisingly well so I definitely uh, definitely want you to give it a try and you'll be pleasantly surprised so that's good okay so we're looking at this side plane of the nose here so let's go ahead and blow up on it let's blow the nose or blow her nose okay so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're not too dark anywhere and I can see we are too dark right here so I'm just going to uh, calm down some areas where I might have been overzealous and that's going to be a theme is to look where you might be overzealous and correct them as you go okay like I said there are some pencil lines we're not going to be worrying about them too much now we're worrying about we have bigger nuts to crack at this point so let's let's keep that in mind as we're working And we're just going to go ahead and work on this area here. So you can get detail without overspraying. You just got to control your airbrush. Get that cadence, you know, of, you know, how to pull back. And that comes with time. Every day has to be your airbrush getaway. Remember those airbrush getaways, airbrush action used to have not too long ago? And everybody would be so excited. And I was always puzzled because every day was my airbrush getaway. I had a full-time job and I had to work. I had to leave the house at 7 a.m. every morning. And I would get up at 5 so I can paint before I had to get up for work. And I always said to myself, uh, the airbrush getaway is every day. And we'll go ahead and zoom out out. There we go. So she's coming along nicely, you know, nice and slow. And let's see here. Yes, long time no see, Andre. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, what's up there? How's it going, brush strokes? Good to see you, Jake. So that's cool. Getting a nice, uh, a nice friendly group today, which is really nice. I always appreciate you guys and girls. Thank you for hanging out. And just making things turn ever so nicely. There are a lot of different shapes in a face, not just the nose, the eyes, that sort of thing. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? So you always want to, you always want to look and see where the forms are, what they're doing. Uh, where are the uh, smaller forms, right? Not just the large forms. So right here, case in point, we have 
front lip as it comes down. And then there's this form here. And then, you know, things are turning. So right here, things are turning. And you can see this is not getting as much light as other areas. And it kind of turns up there. Same thing over here. This kind of turns in. And then it moves and gets less light because it's actually the muscles are turning in. So you have muscle coming forward and then going back into space. And our job is to make sure that we translate that. And right here it's deeper, a deeper indentation of the cheekbone. And our job is to make sure that we show that well. And also we have to look at the value differentiation between here and here. And we can see that the value differentiation is too far. So we just have to bring that into step there. One second rule is going to keep us from going off on a tangent, thinking about other things, and just concentrating on her and where we're looking and what we're trying to do. Which right now is we're trying to turn the forms over here. You see it right on the edge, it's darker. It's darker right on the edge. Let's zoom in there and see. So you see right here, it's darker. And the reason it's darker because it's turning away. So it's not a crease, it's not a cast shadow, but it's that point of the form as it's just turning away from the light, thus is darker than other areas. And then we want it to be more gradated and lighter, we just increase our distance. There we go. Right there, a little more indented, a little more indented. Indented is not a word. There we go. See that? Now all these different things we're doing, we're setting up. Right, we're gonna come in with the darker mid, uh, medium mixture, and we're going to deepen some of these darks as we go. I'm gonna load my airbrush with more of the light mixture, and you can see how quick it is to load the light mixture. So you can see this airbrush I'm using is the Extreme Patriot 105, customized by yours truly. Uh, new needle, uh, new backing, spring on the pack valve, um, you know, totally tuned for detail. So definitely is the route to go. And so, you know, you're going to need a cup that's large uh, if you're going to be doing background, stuff like that. So definitely something to think about and that's available on paintedglyphs.com links in the description hey what's up there tone good to see you brad says tim can you adjust your microphone you're fading in and out that might be you because i'm okay is anyone else having any kind of uh sound issues or is it just mr brad andre says tim what fluid not needle and nozzle are you using in the patriot believe it or not it's a 0 0.30 but look at the detail the detail comes from the different needle I'm putting into the airbrush and also, you know, the pack valve, you know, adding the spring to the pack valve, customizing that, uh, having the backing here uh, where I can get to the needle really quickly. So definitely some things to actually, you know, kind of put this extreme Patriot arrow on steroids, you know? Okay, so basically it might be on your end, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brad. Uh, And let's see, let's go over here. Okay, so we're gonna move back and back here. Whoop, that's really detailed. <laughs> okay, 
And let's see if we can just darken her just a tad here. There we go. Again, we're just going to try and make her turn. This cheek is turning. Remember, if the light's coming from above and to the right as it turns to the left and down, things are going to get darker naturally. So you see how things are getting darker. Same thing here. Little darker as it turns. And the rounder the form, the more gradual that turn is, you know. Oh, wow. So a 0 0.8. Um, yeah, that's the thing. That's the great thing is the actual needle and how much it actually protrudes from the actual airbrush, uh, Andre, you know. Uh, this is the, this is the same ad, uh, airbrush tone. It's just the larger cup. But I'm able to get the same kind of detail and the same uh, precision with the pack valve and the access to the needle. So it's pretty cool, you know? No, you definitely don't, Andre. That's a myth. Um, the smaller the nozzle really doesn't mean uh, anything because it, there's so many different variables. Air pressure, you know, the ability with the MAC valve and the pack valve to control that air pressure at the nozzle. Uh, also, you know, the type of, uh, the, the type of material that you're using. So a lot of different variables goes into the detail. This is the Extreme Patriot 105 customized by me. And you can see how it looks different than a normal Extreme Patriot 105. But yeah, this is a this is actually an incredible detailed airbrush with a large cup. You still get that 0 0.30 item atomization too, which is really fantastic. So the best of all worlds. Uh, if you have a 0.18 or something like that, it would definitely uh, specialize you, but you know, you kind of pigeonhole yourself to having that really horrible itemization, you know? Uh, so yes, so I think this is much better. Plus it has the floating nozzle, the self-centering self -centering floating nozzle inside. So it has like a bigger straw. So what does that mean? Less clogging, uh, less issues. Uh, so it really is great. Uh, ability to have more air coming out when you do need it. Sometimes we do need more pressure and more air and we don't have that little baby nozzle that's on those 0.18s so a lot of advantages to this and ever since i did experience this airbrush i sold my microns now i'm not saying that you should sell your microns but for me i had no reason to have the microns anymore and so as you can see, little by little, she's coming together, right? I'm in no rush. I know you guys aren't in any rush. So let's go ahead and ask ourselves, what can we make darker? What are we neglecting? So I think we're neglecting this area. And then I'm also going to come in darker here because the lights on the dark side cannot be the same brightness as the light on the light side. It's a, it's a physics impossibility. Sometimes the photographer can go ahead and mess with things in Photoshop, but the light on the shadow side is never going to be as bright as the light on the light side. Never. Uh, it might be very slight, but it will never be as bright. So we're just going to darken this side up. But before we do that, let's go ahead and work on this side of her hair a little bit. But you can see when I need to, I can really come in and, you know, get a lot of, of uh, tone, a lot of, a lot of material. I can summon that pretty quickly. And I'll have good atomization. So I'm not stuck with that little 0.21 or a little 0.21 or a little 0.18 or 0.15 needle nozzle, I have that ability to 
go ahead and get looser when I need to. It's almost like being an oil painter and having a zero, zero brush, and then that brush could go ahead and be a number three filbert. Uh, you could you could have the best of both worlds without changing the airbrush, which I love. Remember, closer is going to be darker and more detailed, further, lighter, and softer. So that's what I'm doing now, you know. Uh, so the nameless subscriber says, also the left eye looks a little dull and hazy compared to the right. Yes, definitely. And what happens is, is that in the shadows, the details are whispers. In the lights, the details are shouts. So we definitely have to uh, show that. That's so important. So, so right now I don't have that second studio light. So the lighting might be a little funky today, guys. And I do ap apologize, but it should be rectified uh, in the next. Well, the next live stream is going to be a, a, a wonderful interview with Mr. Steve Leahy. That's going to be so great. And that is going to be with the StreamYard software, which is really amazing for doing interviews. And so also, there are times when you will look at it and you'll say to yourself, hmm, things look a little bit out of balance. And sort of like when I remember this analogy when a woman is uh, going out and she has on, she's all decked out and she closes her eyes, looks in the mirror, whatever she sees first has to go. So same thing here. So when I close my eyes and look at my painting, whatever I see first has to go. And this right here is just a little strong. So I'm ever so lightly going to lighten this up and we'll wait until the rest kind of catches up. So we're just gonna lighten that we don't want it to be out of balance, right? Out of harmony. So that's one of the things we're always going to combat. Um, oh yes, Chris says that's gonna be a tiny feed because Steve Leahy works tiny. That is so true. <laughs> Maybe tiny in paintings, but in stature will be huge. So now I'm gonna work on darkening this side because I have to create that illusion of the light washing across the form. So it's lighter on the, on the right side, darker on the left side. Everything is darker on the left side. Even the lights are darker on the left side. Things are still turning on the left side. However, a big however, things are more of a whisper on the dark side. I'm going to bring that down. Now, I could just say, why don't I just do a dusting over the whole thing? But I don't think it's good to do a dusting over the whole thing because then you're not looking at it, uh, scrutinizing the lights and dark. So with that being said, rather than do that, I want you to look at the forms and I want you to try and see those values and those shapes rather than just doing a dusting over it. And you can see the dark as she turns away from the form, the forms turn away from the light. We have stronger stronger darks because the light is unable to hit there and then we'll have the corresponding mid-tone right next to it and then we have the dark of the hair which is even darker than the turning of the form less light is actually hitting the hair as the skin as her cheek is turning it's getting some reflected light, but the hair is not getting any reflected light. So I'm really going to scrutinize this shape here and make sure that I'm hitting it. And 
getting my angles correct. There we go. <laughs> Two for one with Marge as well. Wow, that would be some live stream. Now, the nameless uh, subscriber says, he think it was Proko who said something like, the lightest light is always darker than the darkest light. Very interesting. I thought that was, that's a very interesting, uh, interesting statement. I'm kind of weary of that because that's interesting, but I'm kind of weary of that kind of rule. I can just think of, there must be an exception to that, right? But maybe he's talking about on the actual form itself, and I can understand that. So we're seeing here, there's a separate form. Whenever you see things as they are turning, you're going from the dark into the light, or light into dark, and as they turn, they go with, basically it goes from here to Terminator, the transition tone, the, the, the light, and then the highlight, and that's how it works. But once you see you have the dark, the transition tone, and then all of a sudden you have the light, and then there's a new dark, and you're like, wait a second, hey, what's up there, John? Good to see you. All of a sudden you have a new dark. And if you have a new dark, uh, then that means something. So if you have your dark, your mid-tone, your light, and then a new dark, you know what that means? It's a new form. A new form is asserting itself, which, of course, starts the process over again, going from your terminator or your darkest dark to your transition tones to your light. And then if there's a dark again, that means another form is asserting itself. So it's this uh, sort of... Uh, concept of pack form that the head is just not a ball if it was a ball all we would have to do is worry about the lights and darks and that's it but there are things on top of that ball such as a nose and eyeballs and lips and cheekbones and muscles and everything so there's forms on top of forms and they're all being affected by the light and shade they're all being affected by the light source separately and as a whole so that's kind of a contradiction in terms, separately and as a whole. Separately because they are a separate form and they're being affected by it, but they are within the universe of the larger shape, which is the head. So we'll go deeper into that, definitely. Uh, so the name of the subscriber says, the darkest light is darker than the darkest light, something like that. And yes, it was from... It was form and cast shadows. Can't remember the exact words. Very interesting. That is very cool. And yeah, it's Marge is very, very funny, very talented lady. So you're a very uh, lucky guy there, Mr. Uh, Steve Leahy. <laughs> okay. And let's see here. So uh, Bill says that his wife was disappointed. She was not there to comment on his on uh, Steve's uh, uh, size exaggeration. Oh, okay, that's cool. I know Marge did a wonderful shirt for Coast Airbrush, and that was just fantastic. Really loved it. All right, so last time when I went ahead and, and did the uh, other, other website, we kind of lost, we kind of lost audio. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and do that again. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So I have anatomy of, and I'm going to look for images, and I'm going to find the best image, and I am going to bring it in. It's so important that we actually touch on anatomy because I don't want to just say, okay, 
you just hit the light, you just hit the darks, and everything's going to be okay, without really understanding what we're doing. You know, why, why it's there, what's happening, you know? Uh, it's so crucial. And so let's go ahead and see if we could uh, point out some of the anatomical landmarks, okay? And let's see. Right here, I think we can. And I'm just going to move. Okay, so, so right here, and let's see if I have this over here. Okay, so you guys can still hear me, is that correct? I hope you can still hear me. I'm just going to double check. So you guys can still hear me right now, is that correct? Just give me a quick shout out that you guys can still hear me. And we'll just continue with the anatomy lesson. So, and I'm just going to hopefully... Uh, we, okay, great. So you guys hear me, okay. So you see right here, so here we have the figure, and it's very important for us to realize that, you know, this right here is the, the temporalis, and this is where the temple or the side plane, and then we have these uh, muscles and turning here, right here. So when we're looking at that, and then we go to here, we can definitely see that that same thing is happening, right? So you see right here how this is going in. And then when we go here, we can see how that's happening in our model. Same thing again. We are looking right here and we see that. And we have all these different muscles that are being pulled. This muscle is being pulled along. And there's sort of a... Uh, indentation here of the turning it's kind of sharp and so if we go ahead and look at our painting we can definitely see that's happening so right here we see another form is asserting itself right over here and when that happens we have to start the process again of it going into uh, you know going away from the light getting darker and going towards the light getting lighter it's a new form. It's not the same form as the whole of the forehead. So if we go back, we can say, well, what in the world is causing that? Let's check. And what is causing that with, is really not really uh, indicative here. So we would probably have to go to the skull. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into the skull and see what that does. let's see exactly if we can locate that it's very important this is so important and uh, so that's why I'm gonna do this okay cool so I think I found something kind of gruesome very gruesome and let me make this bigger okay so perfect okay so now we're gonna go over here and so do you see what's happening here you can see that right here is what we're seeing. We're actually seeing it and we're also seeing the indentation as it comes down, which is very important. It actually comes down. We're seeing that indentation and we're also seeing this turn. So look at that and then look at the drawing, look at the painting. So you can see those landmarks. You can see this landmark right here as it turns, right? And then we want to know what this is. And then we'll just go ahead and take a look. And Eureka, we can see that it actually, there is a downward turn here, right? A downward turn. And then it sort of goes up. So without knowing that, without actually looking into that, you are not going to uh, really understand what in the world you're painting. You're not going to have as much of, how do I say this? You won't have as much commentary because you're just looking at what you're seeing, but you're not having any intellectual understanding of what you're working on. So once again, so we want to see the landmarks 
in the skull and see where can we put those landmarks or where can we look for those landmarks in the anatomical structure. So right here you see this area right here, it's an indentation, it goes down and then it, and this part faces the light, right? So if we look on our painting and our reference, we definitely can see how it would be darker here, right? And coming over here, there's an indentation, a definite indentation and a connection as it moves up. Again, going back to our anatomy, you want to understand what's happening. So you definitely can see this area right here, and then we can understand exactly what is occurring, right? Why is that happening? You know, what is the reason for that? And now I can. But not only can I see it more clear, but now I have an understanding of what's happening. I could look for it. And if I want, I can slightly exaggerate things to make it more three-dimensional. You know, if you know somebody intimately, you can say more about them. Same thing with the forms and, and understanding. If you know more about anatomy, you can say something more about what you're painting. So there are no shortcuts, my friends. This is very important to go to that next level. You can't, you can't have a lifetime of painting the figure without going deeper. Just like learning chess, you know? It's great to, to play chess and have fun, but if you wanna go deeper, you have to learn the openings, you have to learn the defenses, you have to. But the exciting thing about art is, is that you can go as deep as you want. You can take it to that extra level if you want. And uh, there's no limits of how deep you can go. I think Beethoven said, uh, you know, the more you study, the more uh, the muses will uh, release their secrets. So I think that's pretty cool. And you can also see how we are looking at the value changes here. And the value changes are actually too far away. So what we'll do is we'll bring those values closer because there's no way you're going to have a light on the shadow side that's going to be as bright as a corresponding feature on the light side, right? So what I'm going to do is 10.39. I'm going to take a very short break. Actually, a bad...
Okay, I am back, and this time it's personal. <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys are still here. I didn't lose you. I lost a couple of people, but that's okay. The ones who uh, are meant to stay are here, so I'm happy. And let's see. We'll go back to our image here. And like I said, you know, one of the reasons why we stay in the light mixture, because this is sort of like the sketching time, you know? Uh, so it's important to uh, definitely, how do you say, it's just very important to go slow, you know, very, very slow. And so that's why we definitely want to take our time, stay in the light mixture for at least 60 to 65 percent of the painting, work out some textures, work out some landmarks, work out relative value. And then before you know it, you'll be in the medium mixture, but you will be working it up really nicely. So that's very important. So what I'm going to do, I realize I don't have the picture of this uh, pretty Irish woman. And let me see if I, I think I can find her. So you guys can see, you guys can gir and girls can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So here she is. We'll move her over here. So you can see what I'm talking about, land, you know, landmarks and stuff like that, anatomical landmarks, that sort of thing. So that's cool. And let me move my reference. I use the program Pure Ref. You can't see it, but it's definitely there, and it's uh, a lot of fun and very useful. So we're just going to continue turning this form over here. Uh, so we'll work on this. We'll just continue making the turn of the form. Just like so. There we go. Just turning those forms. We're still in the light mixture. We're just going so slow. We can definitely see that the values of the of the uh, under eyelid are the same. So we definitely have to fix that. Lowering the values here. You get some of the skin texture. A lot of times I talk about the, the grain of the skin. And you'll notice the grain of the skin. You know, which way is the skin moving? Uh, across the form. It's being pulled over muscles and tendons and everything like that. And eventually you want to you wanna do that. You want to look for that. Um, you want to look for the grain of the skin. And you're not always going to see it, but if you look for it, it will reveal itself in time. And so I am pulling out some of the lights here because as you see, uh, this part of her upper cheekbone is actually uh, turned towards the light and we have to make sure that we at least recognize that and show that. Very, very important, you know. And let's see, someone asked me if I was painting from memory. No, I, unless you, uh, you know, having a conversation with someone else. Uh, I know that was an exercise in art school to have us paint from memory. That's interesting. It kind of uh, helps us to really concentrate on what we're seeing so we can recall it later. It kind of piques our observational skills. So let's see, did I miss anything? Uh, oh, so you guys are talking about the mod of the customized airbrush. Thank you for the wonderful, uh, the wonderful uh, reviews. I appreciate that, Brad and Willie and and uh, and Colette. Thank you so much. No, I actually wasn't uh, painting from memory, that's for sure, Andre. I have this one second rule, so I make sure that my, my brain 
doesn't get involved in this. And uh, so I was using Pure Ref, you know, that software where you can't see in the live stream, but it's on my desktop. go see how slowly I'm building things up very slowly very deliberately no rush whatsoever so Andre says idyllic memory is actually a thing I had a friend from college that had it oh wow that's really cool Andre definitely So as we are turning the forms, this looks all white, but it's not, you know, there's things happening. So we're just going to go ahead and we're really going to be pumping that trigger and we're going to be looking for the variations of form. But remember, we are still looking at the anatomy, right? We're still, we're still making sure that we pay attention to what's happening and see if we could go ahead and express those changes of form so we definitely we want to we want to pay attention to what we're seeing but we want to see the uh, anatom anatomical anatomical structure underneath right and the same thing with here you know uh, we have the muscles that we have to contend with right there are a lot of muscles going on such as this muscle right here, uh, which is called the levator labii superioris. And that lap, levator labii superioris would be right over here in our picture, would be right here. So that muscle is showing itself. And now that we know where it exists, we can kind of look for it on both sides and you know on the shadow side it's much more of a whisper but on the light side it really asserts itself which is very interesting so it's it's really helps to uh, you know just look for those landmarks and you know on your anatomy studies or your anatomy books and then go ahead and try and find them in your reference and then put them in your painting. So once again, darkening and also looking and seeing, okay, you know, I might have too much, uh, too much contrast in certain areas. Like here, I can calm down that contrast and I might have too little contrast in certain areas. And then I can increase that contrast. So it's sort of a, a balancing act, right? And trying to see where, you know, you might have gotten overzealous and might have gotten a little complacent. And then finding that balance. So right here, let me go ahead and darken this image. Let me see if that helps if I darken it. I think so. That looks better, right? Looks better to me. Okay, great. And... So what is the anatomy app? Actually, I just looked this up on the internet. So it really wasn't an app. There are some great anatomy apps out there. I think there's a really good one on, wow, there's a good one that's on the iPad. And I'm gonna, I'll instant message that to you. But if you guys know of a good one on the iPad, please let us know. And that would be very helpful. But uh, definitely is one that I do use on the iPad. I forget, I downloaded it so long ago. I think it cost me like $6. But it's very helpful nonetheless. So you see everything looks very light. But as I come in with the mid-tone eventually and darken these darks and make them richer, that means these mid-tones are going to have to get darker. So you're going to see things start to turn much more as we go further and further into the painting. Okay? So we just have to be patient. Things are going to be three-dimensional, but on their own terms, you know? 
we can't rush it. We just have to make sure that we understand and be receptive to these forms. Like right here, we're going to be receptive to that. And we're going to see it. And we're going to make those forms turn as it goes towards the light and away from the light. And continuing down the center line of the form. So you see here, I'm still still turning this on a really weird angle. So I have it actually cutting in and it doesn't cut in. The dark doesn't come in, cut in, the mid-tone does. So I gotta straighten that nose out a little bit here. And when I mean straighten out, I'm straightening out the actual cartilage bone there. And then bringing that sort of dark all the way down to about here. And then we have a dark there. And just trying to find the, the overall shape of her her nose by correctly getting the light and dark and the forms of how it's turning towards and away from the light okay so now as we're doing this we can see that the lips are kind of flat they're not really being affected by the light and darks as much as if we've been doing with the nose the eyes the forehead so let's go ahead and fix that you know uh, so let's see. I don't, you know, the painting from memory is very interesting. I think it's great from an exercise standpoint, but the work looks horrible. Uh, and I think we shouldn't be doing that too much. I mean, what we can do, what I would like, if we have a memory, and that's great, is to go ahead and sketch out that memory and then go ahead and compose the painting. That sounds much more exciting than just doing it from our heads. Uh, you know, our subconscious gets in the way and just never looks as good as working from a reference, in my opinion. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn those lips, right? So let's go ahead and turn those lips and let's zoom in. There we go. Okay, again, please don't worry about the pencil lines. Uh, they'll, we'll get rid of them when we get rid of them. Uh, so right now we're gonna make these lips turn. So you see we have the bottom parts of the lip here as it's turning down. It's darker right over here. And then over here as the bottom lip is turning away from the light, it's darker. There we go. And same thing here. As it's coming out from the crease of the, uh, the, the uh, sort of the meeting of the upper and lower roof, you have that there. And then it's just before it turns towards the light, it's a little bit darker. See that? So what we're doing is we're making these lips three-dimensional. Now, we're really not making them three-dimensional. We're just paying attention to how the light is actually reacting to these lips. And notice I haven't done any detail whatsoever. We're painting the, tr the forest right now. Trees are coming. But right now, we're just trying to make these lips three-dimensional in the space. They are being affected by the light in the same way, the same light as the eyes are, as that nose is, as that forehead and those anatomical landmarks. Same thing is happening here. If I want the gradation, I'm going to slowly increase my distance. All right. And you see that. So what's happening is not, this is not just happening. This is part of our anatomy. This is part of what makes us tick, what makes us a person on a universal sense of the word, right? 
So once again, so we're looking at the lips and we're looking what's happening above the lips and over here. So if we can go ahead and look at the anatomy once again, uh, let's see right here. So you can see in the chin, there's a lot going on. You can see on the chin where you have this area, right? As it comes over, that's actually a muscle that comes over here. That's why it's darker. So you look at the chin, we can go ahead and look at it. We can see that muscle coming over. It's really cool. And the same thing, right? Uh, if we want to look at what's going on like by the cupid's bow and what's going above the lip, we can definitely check it out. And we could see that there are a lot of a lot of things happening with muscles and uh, like right here you see how the cheek sort of comes out and then is intersected right here and that is actually happening with anatomy something something is occurring with that that's making that happen and this part right here is actually a muscle that's being pulled and that's why the cheek actually stops here because the muscle is pulling here and kind of stopping the uh, fatty part of our cheeks from continuing down. So it's so important to know those things. It's so important to uh, explore that. And we're just going to look at some of the subtle light and darks that's happening here. So now I can look at the cheek and I can look at the cheek of the reference, right? We can go back and I could say to myself, self, uh, this is way too light, right? It really is because if the light's coming from here, and this is a three-dimensional form and it's turning, then there's no way that this could be the same brightness because it's turning away. So on this side, it has to be darker. It just must be darker. So that's sort of that logical thinking that I want you to have. I want you to have that logical thinking, you know? So let's go ahead and uh, make that happen. I'm going to probably be about four inches away. And I'm just going to make sure that it's darker on this side. And then as it turns towards the light, of course, it's going to slowly get lighter, you know. Uh, so let me see. We have a question. Uh, hey, Tim, you are, are you going to get the details of the freckles? And yes, definitely. But remember, you know, you want to paint the forest first, right? And then you can paint the trees, and then you can paint the leaves, and then you can paint the bugs on the leaves. But we have to make her forms turn. Freckles is not a consideration right now, and so eyelash is not a consideration. My main consideration, which I want your consideration to be in at least the first 65% of your painting, has to be, must be, working on the three-dimensional form, making these forms turn, not just the head, but the form of the eyes, the forms of the nose, the lips, the chin, the ear. Those are things that I think are going to be paramount to make your painting look like an old master painting. That's what they concentrated on. That's what I concentrate on. So uh, if you do that, you're going to be in good shape. So good question, and we will get that, but that's way, way down the line. And so again, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to uh, turn some of the forms here and continue with this cheek area. And then we'll look at the anatomy as well. So let's zoom in on the chin, chin again. Oh, great. So you have a tablet. Okay, whatever works, right, guys? You know, whatever makes it, you know. Uh, so Andre says, how about Tim, would you, would your job be easier if you had a super memory? I do have a very good memory and, uh, but I don't want my mind to get in the way 
of my painting. You know, I know that if I don't do that one second rule, everyone knows about my one second rule and how maniacal I am about the one second rule. And uh, so that keeps me, uh, Andre, from getting a little bit, you know, a little bit complacent or, wor or relying on my memory. But I think most of our creativity happens in the preparation of the painting, of our ideas and that sort of uh, matter. So I think that's probably where I would be most, uh, most creative would be in the uh, preparation or, you know, finding the subject and the background, stuff like that. That's where the most of the um, creativity is. I think in the actual technique, I don't think it's, it's creative at all. It's a very technical, technical work, you know, technical job. So we just, um, and I think it's it's a really tough technical job, right? It's really not easy. And we're just gonna continue turning this, turning these forms. And also remember, things are turning from left to right and up to down, up and down, right? So from left to right, you see it's darker on the left side up and down, it's darker on the bottom. That's how you get things to really look as if they're three-dimensional and they're in space here. And then all of a sudden, you have this beautiful realism that really is uh, wowing people. And you just really have to uh, think of this intellectually uh, during the painting and not so much emotionally. Emotion happens, I think, early going, but it doesn't happen uh, during this process. So now you can see right here, it's a little bit darker. I'm gonna be about five inches away. Five inches away really keeps me from going too dark. And I can go darker later, but from five, six, seven inches away, I can get super, super light, super gradations, six, seven inches away. You know, when you're doing large areas, you don't have to be close. So why be close if you don't have to, right? It's so important. Um, you slow and steady does win the race. It wins it every time. Uh, you know, some, you ever see those people who come in and they have start with a medium tone and they're like swashbucklers. Those are the ones who usually end up, you know, walking the plank, you know. So, uh, you know, if, you know, every battle is won and lost before it's ever fought, Sung Tzu, the art of war, and the same is in painting. Every battle is won or lost before it's ever fought. So make sure you, preparation is key. And then from there, we, uh, preparation and execution. So what we're doing, preparation, what are we preparing for? We're preparing for the medium mixture. And then later we're going to prepare for the dark mixture. And then we're going to be preparing for, for the white pastel. So you see how preparation is everything? And But if you're not prepared, if you don't do this now and prepare for that uh, beautiful uh, medium mixture, it's not going to matter. But if you prepare for it and you set up, you're going to really, you're going to, it's going to be a game changer. It's going to be like falling into place, right? Everything's going to fall into place. And that's what you want. You want all your decisions to be building up for something. What is it building up to that finished product of what uh, Mr. Steve Johnson says? He loves that part, the icing on the cake. When we come in with the white pastel and pop out these highlights. Well, we can't do that unless we do this correctly and we have patience. We have to have that patience. Without the patience, it doesn't work. The technique only works if we do. It only works if we actually execute it. So let's go ahead and continue. So I'm looking at her and we're gonna work on her, her outfit a little bit. We're gonna do that. But I want to go ahead and uh, let's, 
Let's take our eraser and let's start putting in some of the negative space of her hair. I think that would be good at this point. We'll come up here. And negative space. Colette, thank you so much. That is so nice of you to say. I'm very encouraged. Thank you. And we're going to have this aggressive eraser. And these uh, these erasers are beautiful. They are available on paintingglyphs.com. Uh, they're hard to get. You can't get them in stores. They don't make them anymore. So I do carry them. And so you see, right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to establish some of the negative space in the hair. Just a little bit here and there. I mean, of course, this is just the beginning of it. And yes, someone asked earlier, does the ink erase quite well? Uh, again, the light mixture is very diluted and the paper is 184 pound cardstock. Uh, it's color line paper by the company Canson. Don't get mistaken with their pastel paint paper called Me Taints. This is totally different and it is just amazing. This is amazing, this paper. It really is tough. Doesn't mean that you don't have to baby it, you do. But you know what, what I like about it? I went to art school, we didn't work on synthetic papers. And I'm not saying anything against synthetic papers, but you know, we like to have a piece of paper you know, a piece of paper with some nice, uh, nice texture to it, absorbs the ink well. You know, for me, coming from that classical background, those synthetic papers just don't cut it for me. And it just doesn't feel right. So it all be depends on your background, where you're coming from. But this paper is really wonderful. And you see, I'm just establishing that, you know. Of course, we have a long way to go, but it's the whole thing of bringing the painting up together, right? You're not, we're not trying to, you know, finish an eye and go to the next eye and finish the nostril and go to the next nostril. Uh, that's not, uh, not bringing the forms together. So let's go ahead and zoom out and see what it looks like. Uh, so the name of subscriber says you always thought India ink did not erase well it is waterproof but remember as you thin it out uh, it becomes a little uh, as you thin it out it becomes a little more uh, malleable so to speak right a little bit of moisture there we'll just dry that up there we go okay so you see, she's starting to glow and we haven't even, we're not even thinking about the medium mixture yet. That's not even like in the transiums of my mind right now. And so let's take our aggressive eraser and let's just establish a few hairs here just to keep it in the game, you know? I mean, we're not ignoring where we know things are there. So we can, we can go ahead and indicate you know, sort of our own little uh, preview of what's happening. So we can do slight indications here and there, self-edifying, they're really not necessary, but we just want to go ahead and establish some details. And this way we know we're bringing everything up together, okay? So let's move over here on this side. So yes, we are definitely neglecting the side on the right and the hair so let's go ahead and uh let's 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 work on that a little bit shall we okay so we're still in the light mixture of course and we're going to just work on this side we have her ear and we do have some interesting things happening over here so we're just going to establish that a little bit and we do have a dark and her hair really starts blending into the background quite a lot we have some light hairs here that I basically just established with the eraser. And as I deepen the hair, I'm going to do more of that. And that's going to look pretty good. But, you know, we just got to make sure that we don't get too detailed. Remember the forests, right? So when I'm painting large areas like this, I don't have my glasses on. I don't want to see the trees. I want to see the forest. And that keeps me honest. Now, keep you honest too. One second rule. 
One second rule applies when you're doing the large areas as well as the, the small areas, mm -hmm. meaning you're never going to paint for one second without first looking for another second. Now, one second doesn't mean that you just, you know, that it could be any unit of time up to like five seconds. So you can look at the reference for five seconds and then you can paint for five seconds and then look for the reference of five seconds and then you can paint for five seconds but you don't want it, you want that ratio to stay one to one. You train yourself to do that, your powers of observation are gonna go through the roof. So you definitely want to make sure that you continue that, that line of thinking. So uh, next week is gonna be Mr. Steve Leahy and an interview, so um, it's gonna be very exciting. Uh, I want to talk about Steve's first airbrush and also I want to talk about uh, Steve's first commission, uh, all those different things. His art school days, that's going to be fun. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a true confessional out there if you're, if you're still there, Steve. It's going to be one of those VH1 true confessions stories. The, the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> so as you can see, we are in, uh, we're 11, 12, so we're getting close. Yes, this is going to be a skating expose, so to speak, Steve. <laughs> That's gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna, you know, I'll be like, Steve, tell me about, you know, you know, the, the beers in Boston. <laughs> and did you not go to this pub, St. Patty's Day, 1982? <laughs> Were you not there? You know, I'll have some surprise guests, you know, witnesses. <laughs> Oh, that would be great. A surprise witness from Steve's past, you know, a scandal. That would be great. No, I'm just kidding. But it would uh, actually raise the subscriber level, you know, shock. Uh, what is it? The new format is shock, uh, uh, sh sh uh, shock talk show, you know, sort of a Jerry Springer type of thing, you know. Who was that? Mr. Mr. Leahy? Geeky looking? That's impossible. That guy is always suave. I, I heard someone say James Bond at one point referring to Mr. Leahy, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and that's what he says about his paint. Shaken, not stirred. <laughs> So that's going to be about an hour next week, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So it's going to be a different format, and so uh, we're going to look forward to that. And we're going to try and save some time for some questions from the audience, see how that goes. Yeah, there's a little bit of delay in the video, Bill. A little bit, you know. So you see, I'm keep I'm basically catching up this part of the painting, which is a hair on this side, catching things up here. Now. So remember my cutouts guys, so I kept it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this cutout right here, I'm going to put it, put it here, so this way I can hit this dark edge, and really I'm not going for natural value, I'm just going for for that edge, you know, just establishing, re-establishing that edge, 
pulling that out. There we go. So you see, I'm just getting that edge a little bit stronger. I'm going to do the same in the chin area here. That's a YouTube thing. I always get the, that, Leon. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we get, when we have uh, a little bit of delay, that's kind of uh, normal. Uh, I, I guess they're worried about a wardrobe malfunction, like what happened with uh, Janet Jackson during the Super Bowl. Go. So you see how I'm really getting that edge. Edges are a very important element to this. And I just want to really establish that edge. There we go. And, you know, we're going to get there. We're going to continue developing stuff like that. It's going to be very cool. And uh, no rush. So we're going to continue working here. So if we look at this side of the cheek in the actual portrait, you can see it's a little darker over here. Let's go ahead and uh, address that a little bit, just a little bit darker here. We can always come back in with the eraser and pull out those lights of the hair. So more and more, I'm getting away from the fact of painting out the hair, you know, just working loosely like the old masters and then going from the large shapes to the small shapes. But definitely in the drawing, trying to pull back the reins and not get so much detail in the drawing. So this way I'm free to express myself, uh, you know, in a more painterly fashion with the hair. Again, we're going to darken this area and we can always come back with the eraser and pull out those lights of the hair. There we go. One second rule is going to keep me honest. And so eventually I'm going to go darker as I move over here. I'll reestablish those lights. We'll just pull this dark over. And you know, I am in positively, absolutely in no rush to get to any resolution here at all. At this stage. Always, always. Hey, Brad, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And so we're going to take my kneaded eraser. We always go for the least aggressive eraser uh, to do the job because we are working on paper and we don't want to kill it, you know? There we go. Yeah, I have all the top equipment on the live streams. There's nothing we can do about that. That's just the nature of the beast. Uh, I have a gigabyte connection hardwired into my computer, the top software, the best DSLRs, bandwidth all over the place. This is probably the best live stream you're going to get technically. So yeah, there's, there's nothing better than this as far as the quality and, and, you know, no delay or anything like that. But that's okay. It's only a few seconds. It really isn't much. At most, it's like three seconds. Uh, so no big deal. So here we go. Uh, so the nameless subscriber says, how many more video sessions do you think you have this one before she's finished? I would say this is part three. I usually am between part seven and part eight. So I would say between four and five because of how she's working, uh, how I'm working with this. I would say between four and five, definitely. And so as you can see, I'm just refining this negative shape here. Just pulling that up. And then just looking for these, these light shapes. And we're gonna zoom out. And as you can see, little by little, we're getting where we wanna go. Now, here's another interesting thing. It's all about angles, whether you're doing eyelashes, eyebrows, hair. You always want to get those angles. So as I'm looking at the hair in the reference, I can see if I'm looking at the angles, I want to go in that direction, right? I'm not exactly looking for perfection. I'm just squinting my eyes 
and I'm looking at the angle in which that hair is going. So the angle and the sweeping action, the gesture of the hair is really very important. So that's what I'm going to be looking at right now is that gesture of the hair. That, that, you know, remember the grain of the skin, grain of wood, grain of hair. Always find that grain. That's going to give your work a more profound sense of realism. And of course, when we come in, we'll get some of the um, some of the reductive details, such as with erasers and then with pastel down the line. We'll do that. Okay, right here along the che uh, cheek, there is a dark, and that's her hair. And we're going to do little dagger strokes, and we're going to hit that. Just like so. And as we're deepening this area here, we definitely can take our eraser and we can go ahead and reestablish some of these lights with the hair. Remember, hair against a dark background is going to be white. Hair against a light background is going to be black or variations of that in between. So you see that we're just going to reestablish very, very lightly. We're not trying to build Rome in the day. We're just going to establish some of these lights here. Nothing too crazy. We're just, uh, we're doing quick indications, sort of landmarks that are going to give us, you know, where to go when we start going in with more detail. Coming in with the medium mixture, going back and forth with the medium and the light mixture. So, very cool stuff. And so, remember, hit the like button, guys. Uh, we have another 10 minutes. But check out paintedglyphs.com. I'm going to go ahead and uh, type that in here. So, www.paintedglyphs.com. There, you could purchase my airbrush, the airbrush India inks, all the erasers that you see. Uh, so it's very cool. And, uh, you know, my shipping costs are really inexpensive. I mean, crazy inexpensive. International shipping, which normally is what you would pay domestic. So definitely look into that, guys. And girls. And, of course, that helps out the channel. If you're not subscribed and you're enjoying this, hit that subscribe button. I have some really good interviews coming up with some big names. Next week is Steve Leahy and some really big names uh, down the, in the future. I'm trying to get Elvis. So Elvis is a hard one, you know. I'm still trying to make that happen. Uh, I don't know what Elvis knows a lot about airbrushing, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, you know, maybe we can get Jerry Springer or... <laughs> <laughs> you just never know. You never know. Anything could happen, right? So if you subscribed, you'd be like, wow, I just seen, uh, you know, Cary Grant interviewed on Tim's live stream. He hasn't been with us for, you know, 20 years, but it's just going to be weird, you know? Let's see. Remember, we're just getting the direction of the hair. Remember, and as you see here, I let this dry before I went in there because if you erase where it's, dry, it's still wet, it's not going to be good. Trust me, you're going to be like, Tim, that's not good. And I'm going to be like, yeah, you're right. But you see how patient I am, how slow I'm going, and how I'm building things up very, very slowly. We definitely can come in darker. That's a job for the medium mixture. Coming in here deeper. We're definitely going to do that. We're going to deepen this. 
And you can see as we deepen that, you really feel her head kind of turning towards you, right? She's looking down just a little bit and that real, uh, just provocative, uh, kind of emotional stare. There's a lot going on behind those eyes. That's the emotion I try to get, you know? The reason why I pick a certain painting, a certain reference, whether I take the photo myself or I find it on, you know, from another photographer, it is something that, you know, that provokes emotion from me. And then my job is to try and express that while um, painting so you guys and girls can feel it too. So yeah, so my thing is trying to make her turn that head just tilting just slightly just to give uh, that little gesture. If I don't get it, it's just going to look like she's staring at you. But if I can make it so that her head is just slightly turned or uh, tilted towards you, that's going to go a, such a long way to get this emotion. Such a long way. And you can see just by deepening this uh, brow of the nose here. But I can't get there. So I can't just get there. It has to be built up slowly. So if you think about it, you know, if you're going in with detail too early, you're, you're kind of asking too much for your, some of yourself. You want to make sure that you eventually get there, right? You want to get there slowly and you want to build it up so that when everything else is around, it fits in place. And that point is where you start getting likeness and stuff like that, you know? So Todd says, nice work, Tim. Take care, my friend. I hope everything's well in San Diego. And a uh, nameless subscriber says, keep forgetting to ask, what is your painting? Just a random reference? Oh, what is that painting behind me? That's a pastel painting that I'm working on. Uh, it's just an idea. It's kind of a surrealistic painting. And she is, let's see, she's sort of like in the wall. So she's kind of interesting. So that's, that's an idea I've been working on. In pastel, I do some really wild kind of surreal kind of stuff. So it's pretty pretty cool. Steve, have a great night. I will see you next week. Actually, Steve Leahy, check out his live stream. Mondays at 6. Very cool. He does some incredible things. His work is amazing. So Monday at 6 o'clock, Facebook. Uh, Facebook uh, Steve Leahy. So look him up. And, oh, the reference I'm working on. So this is a, a photograph that I found. It's, uh, it's, it is uh, copyright free. And it's just an amazing, uh, amazing uh, Irish woman. And, you know, being of Irish descent, you know, I thought I'd do that. St. Patrick's Day is coming, you know. So take care, Andre. Good to see you. So glad you're here. So we're at 1129. And you can see as we're slowly building things up, things are starting to turn. We're not there yet. Pretty soon we're going to work on her sweater, get that resolved, work on the hair, then come in with the medium mixture, and then you're going to start to see things pop. And again, we're going to reestablish the hair, go darker, reestablish the hair. Uh, so that's going to really be beneficial. So you can see little by little we'll get there. There is definitely no rush whatsoever. So, you know, we had a very good group today. Uh, good night, take care, nameless subscriber and everybody. So, John, take care of yourself and Brad and uh, everybody who was here, Colette and Patty. And, you know, I really appreciate your time and spending this uh, Wednesday with me. Yeah, Wednesday, huh? I can't believe it's Wednesday. So that means that Friday's coming. Every day is kind of blending in with me, you know. Let me see if I can get in front and center here. Every day is blending together. So what's interesting is since I'm in this studio, I kind of, uh, you know, it's different feel to me. It, it To me, it uh, feels, uh, I feel a little more creative and a little more of a work ethic than having everything stuck in my bedroom. So kind of opens things up. Roy, have a great 
great evening great to talk to you sir and so okay guys take care of yourselves next week steve Leahy, hit that like and subscribe button take care guys